Good morning, church family. Good Good morning. morning. You know, on this blessed morning, on this blessed Sunday morning, we give God praise and worship. That's what we're called to do. Let's get into the Word and read a psalm. We're going to read Psalm 116. And for you guys online, hey, if you like to be blessed with Scripture and help get the Word out, please like and subscribe. Share this. All right, so Psalm 116. And subscribe that without The title of the psalm is, I Love the Lord. Amen to that. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. How many of us turn to God in prayer and we cry out to him with all our heart? And then we start doubting and wondering whether or not God hears us. Let me tell you, God always hears your prayers. Not only does God always hear your prayer, but God always answers your prayers. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, and sometimes it is not right now. We, when we ask God for something, need to be asking according to His will need to be asking with the understanding that God knows best. It says, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. And that's what God wants. He wants an open communication with us. He wants us to have a relationship with him. Do you have a relationship with God? The Bible says God knows your needs. Some people say, then why must I pray if God already knows what I need? Because the Bible says you have not because you ask not. My parents may know I need some help with something, but if I don't come to them and say, hey, could you maybe give me a hand? They won't. They'll be like, okay, hey, this boy wants to figure it out on his own. We're willing to help him the second he calls out. That's how God is. He's waiting for you to turn to Him. To say, Lord, I love you. I need you. I'm relying on you. I can't do this on my own. Amen. The snare of death encompasses me. The pangs of Shiloh lay hold on me. I suffer in distress and anguish. Then I call on the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. You catch that? We have everything bringing us down in this world. Everything bringing us down at this point in our lives. We can't make it on our own. Without Christ, we fail. Amen. We're headed to hell. Jesus (coughs) paid our way on the cross over 2,000 years ago. Mm. Jesus paid for our sins. But until we make that choice to turn to Him and say, I can't do it without you. I accept what you've done. I accept your the gift of your blood. I accept you. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Till we turn to Christ and apply that blood to our lives, it don't do us any good. We have to make that choice. We have to make that decision. And it says right here, he calls out, Oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and the righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord perseveres the simple. When I was brought low, He saved me. At our lowest point, God had loved us. Mm. When you did the worst thing you ever did, the thing you don't want anybody to ever find out, <laughs> God loved you anyway. Amen to that. And He knows what you did. He accepts you anyway. Amen to that. He saved you. But only if you choose to accept it. If you choose to accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, rose again in three days. You're saved by grace. It's not your merit. It's not your works. You could spend 40 years in seminary and not find God. (laughs) Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. 
It's in Christ we can find rest and peace. The Bible says, if you want peace, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. It says again, I say, rejoice. Always. Always. Then make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Verse 8, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. And they are. Mm -hmm. You born that way. Show me a person that hasn't lied. And I'll show you a master manipulator. He's convinced you. <laughs> Only one man was ever honest. Amen. That's Christ Jesus. Praise God. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. What's one way you can pay your vows to the Lord? Well, if you're just finding Christ Jesus, the first thing you can do to pay your vows to the Lord, to let all the people know that you are a believer is to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Baptism is important. You're standing up and saying, I have chosen to live my life for Christ Jesus, to live for the Lord, to accept what he's done. I'm going to do this to, to show how my sins were washed away. That's one way you can do it. If you've already been baptized, start praising God. Amen. Tell people Jesus loves them. Share the truth. Rejoice in the Lord. Don't be afraid to lift your hands up and worship. Don't be afraid to give God the glory. Let the light of God shine from within you. Don't put it out because you're worried about what others might think. If they can't handle it, that's their problem. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Stop and think about that verse. How many of us look down on death as being something horrible? Hmm. Man, we walk up to people, so-and-so died last week. Heartbroken, ripped up and tore up. And it's okay to hurt for your loss. But understand, in God's eyes, if it's somebody that believed it's precious, they're now celebrating with God there. They're having what I call a heavenly birthday. That's sometimes God's true healing in your life. It's to take you home. To die in Christ is gain. To die in Christ is gain. That's right. Oh, Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosened my bonds. Think about that one. You loosened my bonds. Mm. What have you been bound to? I'll tell you what, when you allow sin to run in your life, and even as a Christian, you can allow sin to run in your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you allow that sin to run in your life, it affects your relationship Amen. with God. He will not bless your sin. And when you do that, if you pay attention, if you have eyes aware enough to think about it, when you look back and think about when you've let that sin run in your life, you pull away from God. Your prayer stops. Your Bible study stops. Your relationship with God Amen. gets severed. You're pushing Him away. Amen. He cannot be in your life with that Amen. sin. You need to let go of it. Amen. That famous verse, 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he's talking to believers. If you confess your sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Reason why I'm bringing that verse up is because we are saved by grace and we have one mediator. But what that, what that word confession translates to, it's important. What that word confession has two meanings. It means one, that you identify and agree with God that something is wrong and needs to change. And two, that God needs to take this out of your life. You do not need to continue living in that sin. God has paid the way to free you from it. He set you loose from those bonds. 
Yeah. Don't go back and drag them with you for old time's sake. Yeah. Get out. You got the chance to get out. Do it. Verse 17, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What kind of sacrifices are you giving God? What God's looking for is sacrifices of praise, thanksgiving, to take your mind off the things that your flesh might want, and to give the glory to God. Amen. Amen. Start giving God that glory today. Praise Him. And if you don't know Him, Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, it's open to anybody. And believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. If you believe that, when you die, you're going to heaven. No matter what the devil tries to make you think or feel, you can stand on the promise of God. Amen. The Bible says that God is not a man that he could lie. So trust in the Lord today. Start a relationship with him and be blessed.